Hi, this is Stan Fitzgerald with Veterans for America First. Uh, I'm going to introduce an interview that our Ambassador Mallory Staples conducted with our advisory board member, Tom Holman, about the border. Uh, we went in the green room today after a conference in Georgia called Georgia Unite, which also featured one of our speakers, Trevor Loudon. Um, so please enjoy the interview. It's about 10 minutes long. Uh, at that point, we had some technical difficulties, so it kind of cut off. So what I'm going to do is add a border promo video that Mallory and other people made. Uh, we used to play that during her campaign, and that used to get standing ovations. Uh, Mallory and Tom Holman and Admiral Kubik, uh, my wife Donna and I, we've all been to the border together. Uh, and when we got back, we put together this promo, which I think you'll really enjoy after the interview. So please subscribe to our channel, and thank you for following us. We appreciate you. Hey veterans, we are so honored to have Tom Holman with us here today. Wanted to steal a couple of minutes of his time to find out what is going on on our border. Um, for those of you that may not know, I think most of you do, um, Tom has been in charge of ICE under six different administrations, is a Fox News contributor, and by all measure, an authority on our border and what's going on down there. So Tom, I just heard an incredible speech by you. If you're not too tired after letting us hear all about it for 30 minutes, can you tell our viewers just the latest what's happening on the border we know it's um horrific but if you could add some detail to that we'd appreciate well what makes it so horrific is that under president trump we had illegal immigration down to a 40-year low illegal immigration down 83 percent and within a matter of two months joe biden went from the most secure border ever to historic illegal immigration. You couldn't have more a polar opposite like that. It's just, and what I'm trying to tell people, I make them understand, is this is not mismanagement, it's not incompetence, it's by design. He promised during the campaign he's going to abolish ICE, he's going to end detention, he's going to give uh, asylum, he will uh, put a moratorium on deportations, he'd give free health care to illegal aliens. So he opened the floodgates. And it's not, again, not by not mismanagement, this is their plan, and that's why they've taken zero action, not one thing. They haven't done one thing to slow the flow. Mm -hmm. Everything they have done is send more resources down to the process and release quicker, which only brings more. And on top of that, that's just a board. On top of that, the interior enforcement mechanism, ICE, they've been decapitated. They can't arrest somebody. They cannot arrest somebody for being in the country illegally. That's another magnet for more people, more people to come. They know they can cross the border. Mm -hmm. They won't be detained. If they show up in court, which most don't, and they lose their case, no one's looking for them because mm -hmm. ICE can't arrest them. So this is by design. This is open borders, and it's causing a lot of death. Mm -hmm. Both Americans and overdose deaths because the border is overwhelmed. Seventy percent of agents are off the line. Seventy percent. That's when the cartels move the fentanyl. That's when they move the gang members. And I, I mentioned during the speech of the national security crisis is that they've arrested 82 known suspected terrorists. There's over one million gotaways that we know of. There are recorded gotaways on camera and drones and sensors. How many of that one million gallows are, are non suspected terrorists? That's what scares the hell out of me. I think it, that's what's so sobering is you have these statistics that you're rattling off, which are breathtaking and not sustainable, but that's just the known part, the unknown. Of who who are the you know who's inside of that million people that got away right. that we can't identify that we don't know and I feel like all the headlines I'm reading of the crime is rampant all over the country and when I see I mean horrific crimes people being decapitated in these cities and stuff it says that these are illegals who've been arrested brought up on these charts you know over the multiple multiple uh, offenders that are never held accountable that came in illegally and are like locusts attacking the citizens of the united states and the government as you said they're not turning a blind eye this is something that was planned and exactly what they want to happen you know and that's a big unknown right out of the million that got away and by the, by the time he's done being president we're probably going to be closer to three million these are known gotaways. We don't yeah. know how many got away that we don't know about because many parts of the border have, that have no camera, no sensors, mm -hmm. no drone. So like the Big Bend National Forest, uh, federal land, there's no technology there. So how many aliens cross through there that we simply don't know about? The one million are the ones that we know, they're on film. The other ones, there could be three times maybe that got away we don't know about. 
But you're, you're exactly right. The people that got in, we don't know who they are, where they're at. Someday, someday we're going to find out. And it's, uh, you know, people need to understand there's a reason they got away. They didn't cross the river like you see a lot of people doing, turn themselves in and claim asylum. They didn't want to turn themselves in. Mm -hmm. There's a reason why. Mm -hmm. They didn't want to be fingerprinted. They didn't want to be vetted. So, you know, they're just scared the hell out of it. Well, they come to work for the cartels, yes. They don't want to so be many do, them. many do. The cartels are now in 48 states of our nation. MS-13 is now in 48 states. When I started, MS-13 was in two states. Um, in three decades now, they're in every state in the continental United States. Everyone. They're not in Hawaii. So that's run by Japanese organized crime or Alaska. I guess they don't, they don't like cold weather, but they haven't, they haven't been south in Alaska yet. But MS 13 is in 48 states of this nation. And, and this, this yeah. I mean, you just said this is data that this administration has. This isn't yeah. something they don't know. They can go to the same data source I go to, it's, it's their own DHS website. Mm -hmm. And I watch it all the time. And just this month, now there are Godaways. Because they're taking such a beating on the one million Godaways, they changed the reporting mechanism now. They're reporting Godaways this month in three different categories. Again, trying. they know that one million is embarrassing. Mm -hmm. They know it's a huge national security issue. What are they going to do? Rather than being transparent, report it. They're trying to wait. They're trying to figure a way not to report it. For the first month, they they, they don't have the Godaway thing. They, they split separate down three different categories that don't make sense to me. That is their way of hiding the Godaways. Well, if it doesn't make sense to you, then it, it doesn't make sense to anybody. It's abhorrent. I really enjoyed in your speech just now talking about impeaching Mayorkas. Um, that is like a hope. I, I, you know, when you were talking to a couple of people, saying, "What can we do? And what can we do? And what can we do?" And um, so it's uh, obviously getting people in leadership who will see those kind of things through, who will be brave enough yep. to put, you know impeachment articles forward. But I'm hoping the Republicans, the ones who didn't work with President Trump, I'm hoping they learned their lesson about the success that President had on the border mm -hmm. and what's happening now that is killing Americans, mm -hmm. killing migrants at record numbers. Hopefully they're going to stand up and say, you know what, I get it now mm -hmm. and we're going to fight to secure that border. Mm -hmm. You can't have national security without border security. It can't happen. You can't. I saw a tweet the other day that said 87 nations on the planet have borders. What's the problem? Like why, you know, that's, it's not, you know, the United States gets vilified, you know, with the, you're racist, you know, these kind of things for, for doing this, but it is, it's common sense. Well, the, it's the, sovereignty. Question, the question to be asked is, to the ones that want to open borders, that's one simple question. What is the downside of a secure border? Right. What's the downside? Because the upside is less women are being sexually assaulted, mm -hmm. less children are drowning in the river, less migrants are dying overall, less drugs are getting in this country that kill Americans, cartels making billions of dollars less, mm -hmm. right. less known suspected terrorists going to sneak across the line with 100% of the agents around the line. What is the downside? There is no downside. Mm -hmm. the, the people in control right now see a future political benefit of what millions of people in who they think is going to be future Democrat voters. Or like I said in, during my remarks, they don't have to vote. They'll be counted the next census. That's right. won't have results on congressional seats. That's right. That's what it's all about. Well, and you made a statement. You said, if we don't get this under control now, we will we'll never, no, I'm sorry, that was Trevor Loudon. We will never have another Republican president. And they're using the border to get there. And it is that counting the census and then of course giving them a direct pathway to citizenship either one the election our election integrity um, is a threat is threatened by this imminently just well I think it's the first time in my lifetime I think it's probably the first time in the history of this country where foreign cartels have operational control over our southern border. Yes. And that's just a fact. That isn't just Tom Holman. That's several chief patrol agents who are are, are going to command and control the border who have said we've lost it. Yes. They cannot contain. Yes. You, you got to look at the numbers. 1.7 last year, which was historic. We're going to beat that by half a man this year. Yes. We're going to look at close to 2.3 this year. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's, that, that's four million that we caught. Yes. Well, and that another million got known got away, so that's five. And add how many known known got away? Are adding probably another three. You may be as high as eight illegal crossings. Mm -hmm. That's never, never it's just happened in the history of this nation by far. Well, and the Democrat Party who touts themselves is the party of compassion. Um, when I was there, which was 10 months ago, there were 
thought to have lost 150,000 unaccompanied minors after being processed and handed off to the NGOs. Just the they administration lost. just saying we, we don't know where they are. They've lost 42 percent of every UAC come across the board. They can't find 42 percent, and that should scare the hell out of everybody. Yes, because yes. the children are more likely to traffic. That's right. Under the Trump administration, we would have every sponsor mm -hmm. and everybody in the household. Mm -hmm. Anybody in that household, the sponsor and anybody else, we bet them thoroughly. Mm -hmm. Biden administration, they're in such a hurry to release them, they don't have time mm -hmm. to vet them. Mm -hmm. So all our do minimal vetting and just the sponsor, but not to the level we did it. Mark my word, some of these children will be found in peonage situation and be forced labor. Mm -hmm. Some of the young ladies will be forced into prostitution by the, the criminal cartels. Some of the younger, younger children are, are going to be sold, um, many to child porn. Uh, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. I'm telling you, 42% just don't go missing. Hi, I'm Stan Fitzgerald, the Chief Political Advisor for Veterans for America First. I'm here in Georgia with two of our endorsed candidates, YG Nightstorm, Congressional Georgia 7, and Mallory Staples, Congressional Georgia 6. We also have a special guest with us, Angel Rosario, who served two years at the border with the Green Berets. We're going to talk to you a little bit about what the media won't tell you. My wife, Donna, and I were recently out there with Mallory, and YG was out there previously, and Angel's been there for two years uh, with the Green Berets. So they're going to tell you about their in-person, first-hand experiences at the border and give you a rundown on what's really happening there. I recently took a trip down to the southern border to see what's happening down there. And I've got to tell you, what this administration is doing on our border is taking what was once a secure border and turning it into a taxpayer-funded trafficking service. Illegals are coming into our country and being given food, medicine, cash, debit cards, cell phones, and plane tickets. They pick the city of their choice and they integrate into our culture and vote. What's happening on the border is a humanitarian crisis, it's a political crisis, it's a security crisis. We have people coming in from over 150 countries. 64% are single males. We have 150,000 plus unaccompanied minors that have gone missing since entering our country. The cartels are buying up our land, their business is booming, while U.S. citizens are having trouble filling up their gas tanks and buying food at the grocery store. This is outrageous, and this administration is doing nothing to stop it, and the media is doing nothing to cover it. Let's take a little a different approach about this whole southern border thing. We have over 200,000 illegal immigrants coming into our country per month, and that's a conservative number with the high cost of sex trafficking, illegal drugs, and crime coming across our border, it's a problem. But the biggest issue with our veterans right now, we have people serving, military veterans, actually homeless right now, sleeping on the streets. People who have said they would make the ultimate sacrifice for us only to come home to find there is no sacrifice or service for them. To me, that is a travesty. We cannot sit here and treat our heroes this way, the people who are willing to make that ultimate sacrifice and die for our freedom and have them sleeping on the street or disrespected or have no service for them with the pharmaceutical company after they're on five different medications that are making them even more unhealthy. We have got to do something for our veterans. We have got to stand for our border, stand for our country, and stand for the people who are willing to do the job for us. The least we can do is take care of them. So God bless all of our veterans. God bless our country. And God bless everyone that believes that we need to have a strong border, strong soldiers, and it's time for us to take care of them. While serving on the Southern border, I, I managed to witness drug trafficking, human trafficking, and a number of other things. Our southern border is porous and needs to be addressed. It's right now a crisis. We're reaching crisis level and our politicians are not doing what they're supposed to to enforce laws that are on our books. We need to address that uh, as the cartels are getting richer by both uh, the transport of illegal arms 
down into their country and also the money that they make from the drugs that they're trafficking in our country. So please, if you are a politician, please address the southern border as instead of worrying about borders in other countries, we need to address what's going on on our southern border as our American sovereignty depends on this. We are right now being invaded through our southern border and it is going unaddressed.